And this is the part where we get angry. Like, what the hell is going on? I have everything properly configured. Why do I get a 401 response? This is frustrating. However, in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how I personally set up Laravel for SPA authentication. Now, between steps, I'll stop and discuss some of the most common mistakes I see people make. That said, let's start with the first mistake or misunderstanding. Your SPA and Laravel API must be on the same top level domain. You cannot have your SPA on domain A.com and API on domain B.com. The reason for this is because Laravel Sanctum, which is the recommended Laravel authentication package for SPAs, works by setting up an HTTP only LAX cookie. This cookie is secure, it cannot be read or stolen, but more importantly, it cannot be shared across different domains. And this is why we need to have our frontend and backend on the same top level domain. Usually you would have a subdomain either for the SPA or for the Laravel API. As an example, in this video we'll pair a Vue SPA with a Laravel API. So let's start by creating the Vue app. We'll do npm init Vue at latest and hit enter. Then it will ask us for a project name, let's say spa.sanctum. If we want TypeScript, no, J6, no, Vue Router, no, Pina, no, and no, no, no. Let's cd into our app. So I do cd spa.sanctum, run npm install, and then npm run dev to start it. As you can see, our Vue SPA will run at HTTP localhost port 5173. Now let's put this aside for a minute and create our Laravel application. I'll cd into sites, which is where I keep all my projects, and create a new Laravel application using the Laravel installer. So I'll do Laravel new sanctum. I'll cd into sanctum, and then I will initialize a new Git repository, add all the files, and set an initial commit. And then what I will do is require Laravel Breeze. Laravel Breeze is the easiest way to scaffold a Laravel API application. So we'll do composer require Laravel slash Breeze. To scaffold a Laravel API application, we can run PHP artisan Breeze install and then API. When running the install API command, Breeze does a couple of useful changes. We can use git status and git diff to check them out. So let's do git status. As you can see, Breeze deleted pretty much all our frontend related files. We no longer have a package.json file, app.css, javascript, blade files, not even the vidconfig file. Another thing it did is it added auth related routes, controllers, and tests. Finally, it also pre-configured some of Laravel Sanctum's settings. If you want to take an even closer look to what changed, you can use the git diff command. You can do git diff and then pass the path to the file you want to inspect. Let's say config slash course.php. And here are the changes Breeze made. Anyway, let's open up this in PHP Storm. The first thing I'm going to do is configure the database connection. So I'll open my env file. And I already have a database, but it's not called Sanctum, it's API. I'll save this, and then I'll open database seater and uncomment the test user. So we have a user to test with. Finally, I'll migrate the database using PHP artisan migrate, fresh, and then seed. Let's run the application using PHP artisan serve and we encountered our first small problem. The application runs at HTTP 127.0.0.1 port 8000, but the Vue application is on localhost 5173. And as you might remember, both the SPA and Laravel API need to live on the same top level domain. The good news is that localhost actually points to 127.0.0.1. So if we go in the browser to localhost port 8000, we'll see our Laravel application. And our Vue app is on localhost 5173. So both applications run on the same top level domain. The only difference is the port. 
The next thing we need to do is configure course. But before we start, let's talk a bit about what course actually is, because some people are still confused by this term. So when a browser makes an AJAX request from one origin to a different origin, we call that a cross-origin request. And by default, browsers block this kind of requests. Course, which is short for cross-origin resource sharing, is an HTTP header-based mechanism that allows a server to specify any origins other than its own from which a browser should allow making requests. So we can configure our server to allow requests from other origins. But what is an origin anyway? An origin is defined by the scheme, host, and port if specified. So when comparing two URLs, if any of these three parts are different, the URLs are considered to have a different origin. So in our case, we have the API running on HTTP localhost port 8000 and SPA on HTTP localhost port 5173. So the scheme is the same, the host is the same, but the port is different. This means these two are different origins. Back to our Laravel application, we can configure course inside the course.php config file. The breeze install command already did a good job configuring some of these settings, but in any case, let's go through them one by one and explain what they do. This path key specifies which Laravel route paths can accept cross-origin requests. This star right here means all, so all paths will accept cross-origin requests. Then we have allowed methods, and this says what kind of HTTP methods can be received. So post, put, delete, and so on. Allowed origins, and this is super important, specifies what origins are allowed to send requests to our Laravel application. We also have allowed origin patterns, and here you can specify a regex pattern that match the origins. Allowed headers are what headers are allowed to be sent in, while exposed headers are the headers we want to expose to JavaScript. Max H is used to cache preflight requests. A preflight request is a request the browser makes to ask the server for permission before sending in a cross-origin request. And finally, we have support credentials set to true, and this tells Laravel to share cookies with the SPA. Where most people go wrong here is with the paths and allowed origins. Here you must either manually enter all the allowed paths, and you can also use something like API slash star, and this basically will match all the paths starting with API, or you can just leave in the star and allow all paths to receive cross-origin requests. As for the allowed origins, one common mistake I see is entering the origin with a trailing slash. This will not work. The origin must only include the scheme, the host, and the port if specified. So no trailing slash, otherwise it won't work. So let's go to our env file and update the frontend URL. I'll open the env, scroll up, here we have frontend URL set to HTTP localhost port 3000. But we actually need 5173. So let's update that, 5173, and remember, no slash, it will not work with a slash. Next up, we need to configure our cookie domain. If you open your session config file, and scroll down, you'll see we have a key called domain, set to our env session domain. So let's grab this, go to our env file, add it in, and here we need to enter the cookie domain. When setting this, make sure you do not include the URL scheme or the port or a trailing slash. So if you do something like this, it will not work. If you do something like this, it will not work. If you do this, it will work. If you do this, it will not work. So only include the host name or the domain. Let's say we have something like tallpad.com. However, there is something even worse than setting in the wrong session domain. Let me show you. Here I have another view app, but this time I have it set up under a subdomain, so sp.example.test. I am confident I have everything properly set up, so I'll go ahead and try to authenticate. I'll do test at example.com and then password. When I click login, however, I receive a 419 error. This means we're not sending the correct CSRF token. But if we look at the network tab, we see that the Sanctum CSRF cookie request was successful, so we should have the correct cookies. If we go to the application tab, under cookies, we don't have any cookies, so what the hell happened? Then we remember, hey, I forgot to set the cookie domain. So I go to my env file, 
And here you can see I have everything set up. I have the correct app URL, the correct front end URL, but I'm missing the session domain. So let's add it. I'll do session domain equals example.test. So here we need to enter the top level domain. If we go back and try to log in again, we now get a 401 response, which means we managed to log in, but the subsequent request grabbing the user details failed because it couldn't be authenticated. If we check the cookies, here they are, they are properly set up. And this is the part where we get angry. Like what the hell is going on? I have everything properly configured. Why do I get a 401 response? This is frustrating. However, if we are to go to the top level domain, so example.test and inspect the cookies, we'll see that we have two pairs of cookies. One for the top level domain and another one that allows cookies to be shared on subdomains. And that's why you get the 401. If we are to remove these cookies, go back and try again, the request is successful. So this is a painful example where things can go wrong when configuring Laravel for SP authentication. So if you somehow receive 401 errors and you have no idea why, please check the top level domain cookies for duplicates. Back to our initial setup here, the last thing we need to do is make sure the stateful domains are set. If we open up the Sanctum config file, we see we have the stateful key right here that is set to an array determined based on the Sanctum stateful domains env value. So let's grab this, paste it here and set it to localhost port 5173. The stateful domains work pretty much the same as the course allowed origins. If the domain sending the request is not part of the stateful domains list, the request won't be authenticated. Moving on, let's open up our Vue SPA, add a login form and attempt to authenticate our test user. But before we do anything, let's make sure we install Axios. So I'll do npm install Axios. Axios is great because it does some nice things out of the box like taking the CSRF cookie and set it as a header when sending a request to our Laravel API. If we were to use fetch or something else, we'd have to do that manually. So now I'll go to the app component and let's say we'd have a form, which is a reactive value. That is an object with email and password. Down here, we'll replace the welcome component with a form that calls an onLogin function. And of course, it has the email and password as fields plus a login button. Let's add the onLogin function. The first thing we need to do here is call the Sanctum CSRF cookie endpoint. This will set a cookie with a CSRF token Axios can then use for subsequent requests. So we'll do await axios.get http localhost port 8000 sanctum slash csrf cookie. Let's make this function a sync. And then what we need to do is call the login endpoint with our email and password. So we'll do await axios post and let's grab this. We'll have login and we need to send our email and password. So email is form.value.email and password. Finally, to test that our authentication worked, we'll call the API slash user endpoint, which will give us the currently authenticated user details. So here we'll do access get localhost 8000 slash API slash user. And let's put this into a variable. Let's say we'll use the structuring to grab the data. Let's also have a const user, which is a ref. And then set user.value equals to data. And let's display it here. So if this works, the user will be populated with whatever data Laravel gives us. Let's import Axios. Another thing we need to make sure is that Axios sends the credentials, the cookies with the requests. And we can configure that by saying Axios defaults with credentials equals true. Let's go in our browser and test this out. Here's our form. 
I'll say test at example.com and password. Click log in and here's our user details. So that worked. To end this video, I'll answer a couple of questions I received via email, Twitter, and YouTube comments. The first question is, do I need to call the Sanctum CSRF cookie endpoint every time I make an authenticated request? The answer is no, you only do that for any unauthenticated request that isn't a get. For example, post requests to slash login, slash register, slash forgot password, and so on. Why is the login route inside the web.php file? And can I move it with the API routes? You should be able to move it, but I wouldn't. At some point, I might need to add token-based authentication for mobile clients, and it would make sense for slash API slash login to return a token, and slash login to update the session cookie. So I'd keep login inside the web routes file. How do I refresh the CSRF token? The answer is you don't. The CSRF token is refreshed and prolonged every time a request is made. It will only expire due to user inactivity, usually after two hours. You can configure the session lifetime in your .env file by updating the session lifetime key. What are preflight requests? A preflight request is the browser's way of asking the server if it will accept a specific cross-origin request. Imagine a conversation going something like this. The browser comes and says, hey, um, can I make a post request from this origin to this endpoint of yours using these headers? Then the server says, let me look you up, and oh yes, this origin is on the allowed origins list and we accept post request. So yeah, go ahead, send it over. Then the browser sends the actual cross-origin request. And that's all it is to it. And that was it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff. Bye.